Hi, I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, I am going to talk about Andrew Kramer's amazing video tutorial that was done in After Effects on the decaying process or the decaying effect, okay? I'm gonna break this into three different videos and I'm gonna have three different discussions about it, okay? The first video will be this video and it will talk about how to set it up. The second video, I'm gonna actually do the decaying effect itself. And the third video, I'm going to set up the environment that the decay happens in, okay? Now, I'm going to do this all in the free version of HitFilm Express. And this tutorial is specifically geared towards people who are beginners. So if you are not a beginner, you can go away. We don't need you here, okay? Because you're just gonna watch this video and say, oh, I already knew all that, and I wanna dislike it now, and that video is this bummer, you know, I wasted all my time. This is not for anybody who is not a beginner. So if you're a beginner, stick around, because we're gonna have some real fun. So I'm going to start by creating a new composite shot. I'm going to only make this five seconds long. I can change the duration here. And I'm going to call this one graphic. Okay. So this is where I'm going to keep my graphic that I'm going to add my decay effect to. And just for now, I'm going to create a new text layer. And I'm just going to alter the width here to be 1920, which is the width of my project. Make the height a little bit higher, maybe 600. Okay, if I click on this icon, the text icon, I can then type in the word decay. And if I use my cursor to highlight the whole thing, I can go to the text tab, center it, uh, make it bigger, and even change the font if I like, okay? So now I have my graphic, right? This is what I'm going to use when I go ahead uh, and create the extruded graphic that I will add the decay to. Now, I have in here a folder already that are called logos, and I can drag these logos in, see, one at a time. Uh, and I've just sort of created these just for the fun of it, all right? And they're just a series of them. This will show you the idea uh, that uh, any graphic will do and that if I adjust the graphic here, then in the final result, it will automatically be updated. And this is known as being procedural, right? So it's all procedural, all right? The next thing I want to do is, is I want to create a texture folder that I'm going to use as my base to build my final product out of. So I'm going to create a new composite shot and we're going to label this one texture and I'm going to click OK and I again I could create a texture or I could bring in textures Andrew Kramer in his tutorial actually brought in uh, textures and I happen to have these four textures sitting in my um, textures folder right here I have a cement texture I have a rock texture I have a steel texture and I have a wood texture just for good measure though and to show that I can do this all inside of it film I'm gonna create my own texture as well so I'm gonna create a new plane layer and I will leave it black click OK and if I search in the effects panel for the fractal noise effect I can drag that into the plane and poof instant texture right there and that's really all that I need okay but we can again everything that I change here in my texture comp will automatically be updated in my final composite shot okay all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new composite shot and I'm going to call this an alpha mat okay the alpha mat will contain the outline in white of my graphic. So I'm going to bring in my graphic. Now it happens to be white on nothing, right? In other words, it's transparent graphic, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and create this procedurally so that way if I change the alpha or if I change the graphic, then it will automatically and correctly be updated in the alpha mat. So I'm going to bring in my plane and I can use that same plane over and over again this plane is colored black and I need it to be white so I'm going to search for the fill color effect it's under the gradients and fills folder 
and I'm going to drag that in. And if I open it up, it's already set to white, but it's only at 75%. I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 100%. Okay. Now I just need to be able to cut out this graphic out of this white plane. Okay. How do I do that? I'm going to use what is called the set mat effect. And that set mat effect is sort of like a pair of scissors where it says, if I open this up and I just say source the graphic layer. In other words, I only want, I want to cut out of the white plane where the graphic says to cut out and that's it. Okay. I don't want anything else. Now you say, well, now wait a minute. This looks the same as that. What's the deal? Well, here is the deal. Okay. The deal is, let's say, for example, this graphic was not white. Let's say, for example, it was purple. Okay, so now I have this purple graphic. Well, you know, that's great. Here's the problem, though. I don't want it to be purple here in my alpha mat. My alpha mat, I want it to be white. So I'm going to turn off that graphic and turn on my plane, my white plane. And so now I have a an alpha, white alpha mat of the graphic, regardless of whatever color the graphic was. Now, if I go back into my graphic and let's say I turn on another something, then again, it will make everything white. Okay. And that's what I want. It's either a white pixel or it's transparent. There is no pixel there. Okay. And this is very important. Okay. When it comes to building the three dimensional extrusion going on here. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to create a beveled mat okay beveled meaning it's going to sort of feather in and come into a sharper point here in the front of my extrusion well i'm basically i'm going to go through the same process that i did to create this alpha mat and then i'm going to add one more thing to it so actually what i'm going to do instead of rebuilding this from scratch is i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this alpha mat composite shot I'm going to right click on it and say duplicate. And then on the duplicate, I'm going to hit my F2 key and I'm going to rename this bevel mat. Okay. Clicking enter. I'm going to double click on it to bring it up. And I have the exact same thing that I had before, but here's what I'm going to do. I am going to add one more effect and that is going to be the mat cleaner effect right here underneath the set mat effect. And if I twirl that open, then I will find a few different things that I can choose to do. I can smooth out the mat like this, okay? I can choke the mat down, but what we're actually going to do is feather the mat, okay? We're gonna feather it. So it sort of creates this blur or feather across uh, from white to transparent, okay? Now, Andrew Kramer actually used 20 pixel feather in his example. But it will sort of depend. There may be times when you want a bigger feather and there may be times when you want a smaller feather. I will show you what the difference is as soon as we get to the final shot, which will be right now. I'm going to go ahead and click new composite shot and create a final shot for my extrusion. I want to bring in my texture first because that's what we're going to use. Uh, we're going to put all of our effects on that texture. We will, however, need the bevel mat, but I can go ahead and make it invisible, hide it. We will need the alpha mat. And again, I need to just hide it, okay? All right, so the first thing we need to do with this texture comp is we need to go ahead and cut out the alpha mat. So again, we're gonna use the set mat effect, and I'm gonna drag it onto the texture. Opening it up, I will source the alpha mat. So now I have this texture, you see, okay? Now I want to create my beveled extrusion. How am I going to do that? Well, we are going to go to the scene folder or we could search for and find the parallax effect. I'm going to drag the parallax effect underneath the set mat effect. And if I hit F2, I can go ahead and actually rename it. And I'm going to rename this parallax effect, the parallax bevel effect. The reason is because I'm going to use multiple parallax effects and so I need to keep them straight. Okay, I'm going to open this one up and under height map, I'm going to source the bevel mat. Now you say, well, this isn't really doing much. If I invert it, it still isn't doing anything. What's the deal? Well, that's because I don't have a light on the scene yet. And remember that it's important that we light the scene to get the full effect of the 
of the parallax effect. So what I'm going to do is under new layer, I'm going to say add a light. It's going to want to add a camera. And when I do, pow, now we have an effect here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the floor planes, which are these red and green um, crosshairs, basically. And the new light, I'm just going to bring it forward a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to drag it off to one side, okay? Now, here's the thing. Because I'm dragging it off to one side, the other side is sort of not being shown very well. So I'm going to right-click on that, duplicate it. And then on the duplicate, I'm going to move it over to the other side, okay? So like this, all right? Now there, it's a little bit bright, and that's okay. Um, one of the things that Andrew Kramer did was, in his uh, tutorials, he went ahead and changed the light property from being a point to being a directional light. And I have to admit that that looked pretty good, okay? I'm going to go ahead and make them both directional. The other thing I think I will do is maybe uh, search for the intensity and drop those down a little bit until I feel like I've got a pretty good amount there where it looks okay, all right? Now, I could actually create sort of a backlight and I could create a fill light or even an ambient light. Um, and Andrew Kramer kind of does all of those things at one point or another during his um you know tutorial but for this purposes i'm just going to keep it nice and simple okay now if i open up my texture again one of the things i can do is i can adjust the bevel i can make it smaller or i mean i shouldn't say the bevel i should say the extrusion or i can make it deeper okay if i change the bevel let's say for instance i go ahead and really crank that up then you will see that it is much more beveled here near the front okay if i go in and i just make it barely bevel feathered at all then you'll see that the front is very thickly uh, almost no bevel at all okay in this particular case i think it looks good at 20 okay and i think we'll leave it there all right but if i were to go in say for instance and pick up say that graphic and then open this up it might be a little bit too much of a bevel. So then I probably would go in and cut that down somewhat so that it looks really nice there, okay? All right, now the last thing we're gonna do in this tutorial today is we're going to go ahead and add back in the texture using another parallax effect. So what I'm gonna do is drag a second parallax effect onto that texture comp. And you'll notice right away it already takes the texture from this so i am just going to use my f2 key click on this and call this the texture okay so now again i can make adjustments if i want this to be a less of a texture or more of a texture kind of a thing and it will sort of depend right i think i'll leave it about right there okay but everything is procedural so if i were to go in here and just change to uh, let's go with that logo and then I come back in here, look, there is a new logo ready to go, right? If I want to adjust the bevel, I can do that. What if I wanted to adjust the texture? Let's say I wanted to use this steel texture instead. Well, then it automatically updates and uses the steel texture. What if I wanted it to be this um, wood texture? How about that? Well, then automatically now I have these blocks of wood that are being shown in my uh, logo right in my graphic maybe i want it to be fill, ah, here's a good one right here right oh that looks great doesn't it what if i wanted to change to the cement texture i certainly could do that right so all of these things are procedural within the way we've set it up okay next time we're going to talk about how to actually make that decay happen. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.